Okay. My relationship with two-wheelers began with a hand-me-down pedal bike and the two basic needs for speed and for control. I struggled to push that heavy bike up the hill to be rewarded with a high-speed ride down the hill, making sure to accurately hit the cow path to safely cross the steep banks of the irrigation ditch below. Speed was exhilarating, however, control was lacking. I missed that cow path once. The old bike didn't survive. Next, our father instructed us to safely control a Honda 90. My brothers, sisters, and I took endless turns around the perimeter of the hay field in Kelly Canyon. With the use of a throttle and brakes, I now had control. However, speed wasn't very impressive. Years later, my husband started spending weekends with Harley. Well, this was my view. I didn't want to be left behind, and I was totally out of control. It was time for me to get my very own two-wheeler. With some training, I now had control and speed. And my new two-wheeler came with some very unanticipated benefits. First, I really needed a new outfit. I had to go shopping. I am conservative in my attire, <laughs> but I find myself now drawn to black leather, shiny buttons, and sparkly decorations. Shaps that can be apparently worn with or without jeans underneath <laughs> are also a part of my wardrobe. While riding, I find it refreshingly impossible to clean out my inbox, answer a text message, send an email, sweep the floor, get the laundry done, fix our next meal, I gained some pretty high quality meditation time. Early morning rides down Gallatin Canyon, heading for breakfast at the corral or a ride through Yellowstone Park, they're now filled with the intoxicating smell of pine trees and the river. After cutting across the bridgers, the smell of freshly cut hay fields give life to that really long stretch of Highway 89 heading for a soak at White Sulphur Springs. I can easily get into the comfortable rhythm leaning into the curves of winding roads, or twisties as we call them, roads such as Beartooth Highway, Chief Joseph Highway, Pintler Loop going to the Sun Road, and still, more twisties lead down to Hell's Canyon, where I can feel the intense heat rising from the road, giving that place its well-deserved name. And then, it is with great anticipation that the first full week of August arrives, finally. <laughs> it's a time when one half million of my closest biker friends from around the world gather in Sturgis, a quiet South Dakota town of 6,627 souls who all leave for vacation on that very same week. <laughs> Our adventure begins with the 449-mile pilgrimage from Bozeman to Sturgis. We choose routes that allow some exploration of famous watering holes in search of cheap food and lousy drink, or is it cheap drinks and lousy food, which Al Alzada advertises. We also take in sites that are a bit off the beaten track. Even at our national monu monuments, you never know who's gonna turn up. I better tell my sister she's in this, huh? As we get closer to Sturgis, we feel and hear a low rumble. Traffic turns into solid ribbons of those iron horses cruising through the Black Hills. That dull roar remains as we catch the rhythm of even more twisties on the Needles Highway, Iron Mountain Road. As we arrive in Sturgis, we enter a world where, as one Australian put it, every meal comes on a bun. I 
also, you'll notice immediately that every one of the thousands of bikes take on the unique and creative personality of its owner. Hundreds of venues offer displays of awesome talents and skills. <laughs> Most of those are not rational, nor are they repeatable. <laughs> Concerts include music ranging from new country to old rock and roll, gratitude from the audiences with a twist of the throttle. Tattoos are a required part of any biker outfit. For years, I've been considering what I would like painted on my skin for the rest of my life to brand me as a biker chick. Some people seem to have no trouble at all deciding, but I think I'm gonna keep thinking about it. You know, every biker chick needs after riding apparel. I need to go shopping again. <laughs> Our friend, Paul, owns a vacation home in Sturgis. He rents out his backyard for $25 a night per person. It provides a pretty shady respite from the crowds in the rumble. It's also a time when we get to trade tales of the road and more with more of our biker friends. Now, I invite you to come to see me to resolve your back pain or regain function after your latest two-wheeler adventure, but don't be surprised if I also give you the advice to ride safe and keep the shiny side up. <laughs>